I really like the way he keeps vocalizing everything. Only at the very end does Seth cease to vocalize what's happening to him and how he feels about it, really, when she tears off his jaw. And that starts the final change, transformation, mutation. And even then, as horrifying as he looks in his final form... By the way, is it just me or did he not have any fly wings? Anyway, he still has the eyes of Seth Brandle, of Jeff Goldblum. He can still say so much through just the eyes, and we can tell he wants to die once he's teleported and been, you know, completely destroyed by the fusion between him and the telepod. You know, he, he grabs the, the barrel, takes it up to his head, and the, the, the eyes, you know, you just know when Gina does fire the rifle, it's a mercy killing, you know. And that brings up one of the issues that the films that the film brings up, you know, the kind of euthanasia, I suppose it could be called. You know, if someone is in immense pain and cannot have a good life, should you kill them? You know, it also brings up issues about abortion. You know, should you choose to abort a fetus which might not come out ideal, I suppose you'd say, you know? And let's return to the final transformation, the final teleportation once more. The There's some debate about whether it's because he tried to run away from the pod and he just didn't have time to get out, you know, if it would have fused him with the other pod regardless of if he had broken the door or not. Some people instead choose to believe that it's because he broke the door so the, you know, it tries to grab what's outside the pod itself because there's now an opening and it gets some of the pod with it and fuses the two. I'm not sure which I quite believe but I think there could be arguments made for both and there's also debate about whether he knew that it would happen or if his scientific mind was by then so deteriorated that he just reacted, you know, instinct, you know, uh-oh, something bad might happen, I have to get away from here, you know, the way you might rush forward into, I don't know, spikes or something hot if there's something chasing you, you know, the instinct where it isn't always leading us in the right direction, in the most helpful direction. I, s I would say that by then, his brain, I mean, he's desperate. You, you can tell from his plan, there's, I mean, the, the, the fusion of three people, one of whom hasn't been born yet, it's, it's, it's actually one of the more disgusting ideas of the film, and that says a lot. And the, um, I suppose I should talk about the deleted scenes also. If you've watched the deleted scenes, you already know that the monkey cat or baboon cat experiment, of course, went horribly wrong. And that is essentially what he's trying to recreate with the fusion between the three people here. I 
think it was good that they took that one out. I think it would have been too much, and they also talked about how people lost sympathy for Seth once they saw him beat an animal, even if it was, you know, that fusion. I don't think any of the alternate endings were really all that... I don't know, I suppose there is maybe some value to the one where she wakes up sort of from a nightmare and you aren't entirely sure if she's maybe pregnant or not. It is kind of weird how she's laying there without any cover on, though. I don't personally care for any ending that has Gets there with her. That just... I mean, I... I get it, I guess, you know, he was a character in the entire film. Would have been weird if it was with someone we hadn't seen at all before, but they shouldn't get back together. There's no... And the, the whole butterfly baby thing just didn't fit with the tone of the rest of the film, I would say. As for Getz, I think it's interesting that he, Seth attacks, Brunnenfly attacks him there at the end, and I don't know, I, I suppose arguments could be made. Obviously the hand is so he doesn't shoot him, but then he goes for the ankle, where he could really have just gone straight for the face. I suppose you could say that it makes him, makes it more difficult for Getz to get away. But there is maybe a bit of a sadist trait to it, you know, because... And, and that's where you have to wonder, is it a fly just stopping a threat to it? Or is it Seth, deep within Bragglefly, who wants... Veronica for himself, you know, who wants to get rid of the competition and also, you know, the whole alpha male thing. There have been some, there's been some speculation about if Ronnie could see the whole thing from the window and only stopped him once it was the face. Personally, I just think, you know, first and foremost, it is a movie, you know, you have to take liberties, and it didn't, you know, it made it more tense if that much time passed. I don't think that she would actually wait and let that happen. I liked the, the, the whole biker bar thing, because you really didn't expect, I thought that he was just gonna win. But I guess if the other person, who I understand is actually a well-known, or at least was back then, I don't know, fighter of some kind, I don't follow violent sports, so... I guess if he held his hand steady, it would be the wrist breaking and the bone sticking out. You expected... Seth to just win, you know, to just slam the hand down and that would be it, but he actually broke the... that was really effective. Okay, maybe this is gonna make me sound really stupid, but I watched, you know, the teasers, the trailers, before I watched the movie, so I didn't know about the bar woman, you know. Every time I saw that clip of I don't want to, I'm afraid, and then Seth saying, you know, don't be afraid, and then Gina saying, no, be afraid, be very afraid. Excellent line, by the way. I thought that both women were Gina. I thought it was like a dream sequence, and that they were, like, giving away in the film that it was a dream, uh, giving away in the trailers, that it was just a dream sequence. Yeah, I don't know, I guess I didn't look at her face that closely. It was cut fast. I suppose that's what there is to say about this film. 
So, those were my thoughts on David Cronenberg's The Fly. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.